Well, we are excited to uh, engage with this particular segment and I really appreciate the fact that you put time aside to we our promises to make it value for money for you. We know we are not, uh, even though you're not paying cash, we know that every minute of your time is worth the money. So that's why we are saying value for money. And um, we did a research and in the, in the house, we have a couple of uh, great personalities whom I'll be introducing a little later, or Julia will introduce, uh, so to speak. And then, um, so, you know, we were looking at the adaptability and readiness to work from home by organizations and businesses. And here we look at the role of CEOs and HRs in the emergence of work at home culture. And just put things also into perspective, well, this is an environment we are all in. And uh, for us, when we, before we jump, when this, when the lockdown happened, when this crisis happened, we asked ourselves as consultants, we said, okay, given what's going on, what's happening, what could be happening to businesses, what's happening to uh, leaders and managers, and what's happening to the employees themselves, how is it impacting, how is this impacting their productivity? So we had those questions in mind, and we decided to get on to the journey of actually figuring out these details in terms of what was actually happening. And we made a research, we, we combined forces, with Ultimate Multimedia Consult. They are our clients, but we pulled resources together and we got onto this research, hence the product that you're seeing. And then, but not only that, we, so we released the results last week, but then we said, you know what? For CEOs and HR, they don't want just data. What does it really mean? In the, what does this mean for them? And that's, that's the conversation we want to have today. And again, you may not know me, Ethan Mussolini, like you had friends call me, most of those who know me. And I've been uh, doing full-time coaching, consulting, and training since September 2003. And I've been in 25 countries uh, doing this kind of work. I'm happily married. I'm from a very humble background, but by God's grace, from being a poor orphan with uh, in a small room with jiggers and sleeping on a sack and with grass, to where I am now, where I can speak to you, I, I'm really thankful to God that um, here I am by using some of these principles. So uh, this is the background. Uh, the, we talked to, in terms of the actual numbers for this particular uh, research that we did, we talked 384 people, uh, 53 entrepreneurs, 59 managers, and 272 uh, employees and that was in during the lockdown so we had to overcome so many challenges but we really really wanted uh, to share these details with you uh, to get this uh, research uh, one look at the start to the study the key findings for your attention I will want to talk about uh, we'll talk about the adaptive culture for working from home we'll talk about the cost benefit analysis in adapting work at home culture and the main meat of the day is the role of CEO and HR in the emergence of work at home culture. Uh, there are a couple of things to note that after a survey, uh, you know, what we noticed, we noticed a couple of things, uh, so to speak. But just before I continue, I'm seeing some. Uh, uh, Okay, I'm seeing some message. It's okay. So it's okay if you have something to say, just say it in the, uh, Julia can respond to you. She's, she's our host today. Uh, after surveys, after survey, employees want to know what next, because there's no free lunch in Africa, as they say. It's important to have surveys to identify survey action points, uh, which we'll share with you. And action must be taken without undue delay to enable positive change, because we can't just stay in the background we have to move forward, life never stops. And taking action indicates that management is actively listening. So you have to really, really act. You have to take some action points and we'll be making some suggestions uh, by the end of today. And we also know that CEO, HR are focal point persons in employee uh, management. So the, in terms of the things that we are talking about, uh, in terms of the key research findings, we would like uh, 
uh, to alert you that we brought. So Julia, would you like to introduce our, would you like to introduce our panelist, uh, not panelist, my co-presenter today, Dr. Everest Tudiahikayo? Go ahead, Ethan. Okay, so Dr. Everest is uh, an interesting character. Got to know him through uh, Pamela Ilobu. So when Pamela recommends someone, I mean Pamela has over 20 years experience in, in this kind of work. So we, we've partnered with different people around, so got to know him through uh, Pamela. And having done my background research, discovered that he actually has a PhD in knowledge management and also HR and especially in the HR space. He's been a lecturer in different universities. At the moment, he's uh, an academic registrar at the Lord Bobment uh, Center. Uh, that is LDC, yes, I believe that's what it is. But he's very, very passionate about research, knowledge management, HR performance. He's written many um, articles in, in peer-reviewed journals internationally. So he's uh, definitely, um, you know, a force to recon with. And so he's going to walk through the first segment of the research findings. And then I'll come in later to talk about the, the role. What does this mean for all of us? And then after that, we also have an exciting panelist who will be coming on board uh, shortly. So ladies and gentlemen, let's give uh, Dr. Everest an e-welcome, an electronic welcome. <laughs> you may type in the chat to say welcome Dr. Everest or, or just, um, we can just unmute for just 10 seconds, say welcome Dr. Everest. <laughs> All right, so Dr. Everest, I can, um, okay, I'm seeing some welcome uh, messages coming through already, Dr. Everest, just so you know. So I can, um, I can do the screen from this side, then you take it from there. Dr. Everest. Thank you very much, uh, Ethan. Thank you very much, dear. Uh, Hi, you're very faint. Can you speak a little louder? I'm just wondering why. Yes, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, much better. You are welcome to much speak better. even louder. Yeah. Thank you. Once again, thank you very much, Ethan. Thank you very much, our dear uh, participants. Uh, we are very much uh, uh, delighted to have you this afternoon to share with you uh, our experiences and the findings uh, regarding uh, this. Dr. Everest, can you speak a little louder? Okay. You can hear me now? Yes, speak at that tone. That will be very helpful. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, our participants, you're most welcome to this uh, afternoon session. And they would like to take it up from where Ethan uh, stopped. Uh, regarding uh, the findings of this study, uh, I would like to, to say that uh, given the limited time that we have, uh, we will not go into details regarding uh, the methodologies and the other uh, information. But here before us, we can see that uh, some of the key variables that we considered related to age, age and then the level of education of uh, our respondents. And uh, you can see that actually, uh, in, in, in terms of age, majority of, of, of the respondents were youth, and the, as we shall see late, as we shall see later, uh, working from home, uh, work based uh, home based uh, work is actually uh, favoring all the various age groups, uh, but uh, the the youthful uh, workforce tend. Uh, tends to find it uh, more convenient, uh, but we shall look at that discussion later. But in terms of education of our respondents, you see that there was actually no significant difference uh, in, in terms of uh, levels of education between the managers and, and employees. Uh, so we can proceed, uh, Ethan. So uh, we, we, are, we are going to here, dear um, participants, look at the key question 
uh, pertinent questions that were deemed to be relevant uh, to, to this presentation, to, to, to this forum. And uh, the first uh, key question related to business operational status. So we see that 57% uh, of the respondents indicated that the business operational status was actually partial compared to, to 32 who indicated that their operations uh, remained uh, normal and 11% indicated that actually the business operations had failed as a result of uh, the COVID-19 uh, and, 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 and the adoption of working from home. Uh, number two, we looked at uh, the employee needs and the seventy-seven percent of the managers stated that uh, <clears throat> stated that the main concern was actually their main preoccupation was actually the financial security of the employees, and forty-four percent of the respondents indicated that the main concern was actually uh, at the moment food security, and then the twenty-five percent of the respondents indicated that the main concern was actually. Uh, job security. So we can see, uh, dear participants, that uh, uh, the, the financial security actually came up as the the top uh, main concern uh, of the of, of the respondents under the current uh, the current situation. And and we also noted uh, we also asked the respondents to to give their opinions and the perceptions re re relating to how they are digesting working from home. And 49%, uh, uh, that's close to 50% actually indicated that they are finding it difficult uh, to work, uh, to work uh, from home. And number four, the respondents were required to share their biggest uh, concerns. And the, 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 the two main concerns related to actually performance and then uh, the, 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 the revenue. So this, this is mainly related to the entrepreneur uh, who indicated that managing a pull up of employee performance was a challenge and then the revenue generation relating to the decline in the revenue due to the uh, situation. Number five, relating to employee retention, uh, majority organizations, in the, uh, employ, uh, respondents in various organizations indicated that actually they were uh, somehow managing uh, retention, uh, ensuring that actually they remain with uh, the, the, the worker force uh, within uh, this uh, situation. Yeah. And, and, and Dr. Evers, just to add one point there that the, that was as of late end of March, that those were the figures. So right now, of course, yes, could sure. Have just to put sure, it in yeah. perspective. Sure, things things could have changed there. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Ethan. Mm. So uh, regarding working from home, uh, the most critical skills as perceived by their respondents uh, in terms of team management related to communication and critical thinking. The respondents feel that. Um, at this material time, uh, communication, uh, various communication tools need to be put in place and, 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 and the uh, managers need to be versatile in terms of critical thinking and coming up with uh, solutions to the prevailing uh, work challenges. Uh, working from home uh, required actually use of various IT tools and uh, platforms and the main uh, the common platforms were um, use of email, uh, WhatsApp, uh, Zoom, uh, Skype. Uh, these, are, these were some of the key uh, media, uh, social media platforms and tools being used uh, in working uh, from home. Uh, and, and then uh, regarding uh, the em em employees' readiness, employee readiness to adopt to working from home. Uh, we, we, we noted, we found that actually 64% of the employees were inadequately, inadequately prepared to, 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 to work from home. 
uh, to work remotely. And uh, majority actually were not familiar uh, with the collaborative uh, work tools that are required. For example, uh, use of Zoom, uh, use of Zoom, use of uh, sharing of information via WhatsApp and so on and so forth. Uh, majority were not uh, actually familiar with these tools. And then the other challenge uh, related uh, with above uh, is the access to the technology. 56%, uh, 56.6%, that's close to 57% actually uh, lacked uh, adequate uh, access uh, to, to, the, to the IT tools that, that, are, that are, quite, uh, are quite important in, in, in enabling uh, workers to work from home. And then there were 52% also reported disruptions in power and internet, you know, electricity on and off. And then access to 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 internet viewers uh, participants you are well aware that working from home online uh, working requires uh, internet connectivity um, uh, reliability and then uh, that me that means power uh, uh, data sorry that means uh, uh, access to data to bundles access to bundles and 52 percent indicated that uh, they have uh, such disruptions uh, in terms of employee engagement. Uh, the extent to which uh, employees felt that they were fully engaged uh, with, 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 with their organization, 64.8% indicated uh, that they were, they were actually attending uh, online meetings. And as Ethan indicated earlier, that this data uh, is in respect of uh, the, the opinions and responses collected uh, late March. So it could be possible that now the situation uh, has changed. Uh, there were some concerns, uh, especially related to job security, and 65.6% um, uh, of, the, of the respondents were concerned regarding the, their job security. They felt that um, uh, this, uh, this may not be uh, uh, online working, uh, may, may actually affect uh, their job uh, security. Participation in decision making was one of the concerns uh, of, of, the, of the key questions raised to the respondents. And uh, it was revealed that uh, there was low involvement, especially in the strategy identification. And their participants, uh, we, are, we are well aware that uh, identification and execution of strategies, uh, appropriate strategies. Uh, is actually critical in, 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 in making an organization uh, retain and maintain competitive uh, competitive uh, advantage. Uh, so uh, regarding the ability to adopt the e-learning, uh, the e-learning, uh, increasing e-learning capacity, 50.9% reported no access, uh, no access to, 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 to e-learning and, and, and the learning the participants, you, 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 you recall, that is one actually of the, of, of the fundamental factors driving success in organizations. Uh, next, we looked at the timely payment of salary, and 78% of the respondents indicated that actually, uh, at least uh, the match salary was paid. They, they had been paid the match uh, salary. So we, we made uh, general observations uh, uh, we made general observations via uh, participants, and uh, one of the observations is that organizations actually are making uh, efforts to operate. They are making uh, effort to operate, and we, by the time data was collected, 89% uh, of the organizations were, were, were well uh, functioning. Uh, there, 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 there is now focus of employees, uh, employees current priority needs, as we noted earlier, uh, that security uh, needs, uh, financial security needs, financial stability, job security, uh, food security, you know, these are some of the, of the areas of focus. Uh, managers, immediate concerns uh, relate to, <coughs> relate to revenue generation. Managers are now bothered. Uh, by how they can really uh, uh, continue generating uh, revenue, increase uh, the, the, the productivity and profitability of the company that, 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 that they are managing. 
uh, however, uh, but the other observation was actually, uh, we noted in, in, in the previous slide that um, some, some employees were not, were not prepared, or over 60 percent were not ready uh, for, for the online uh, work or work, uh, home-based working. But we also observe that even managers were not actually uh, ready. Uh, uh, to, 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 we are not a majority of the manager were not actually ready to work from uh, from home. Uh, the fifth observation that we we we, we make is that uh, employee retention uh, is is uncertain in, in the current uh, situation, given uh, even uh, the global trend of job loss. Uh, job loss, which is at 25 uh, percent, so the, the ability to retain employees is, is quite a challenge. Uh, but uh, we noted that managers increasingly are using online platforms uh, for home-based working uh, or teleworking, uh, virtual working, as well as uh, employees. Um, save for the internet uh, disruptions. Uh, majority of managers actually are involved now in this strategy, strategy uh, formulation, although the main uh, challenge that the study unearthed related to the degree of involvement, uh, bringing uh, all the relevant teams uh, on board uh, was, was identified as one of the challenges um and then uh, number eight the eighth observation 50 35 percent of work at home employees were actually reported they were not involved in meetings with their supervisors and the and the and, and this uh and, and this felt uh, this made them uh, feel detached from, from actually the day-to-day the, the, the -day interactions with, with their supervisors and, 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 and the detaching them uh, from uh, their, their uh, organization, from the organization they are serving. Um, uh, majority of employees did not have the necessary tools working from home. Uh, uh, we have already hinted on it in the previous uh, slide. Uh, the, the, the tools relating to the internet connectivity, power, uh, data, and so on and so forth. Uh, then slightly more than half of the employees uh, have, have, uh, have participated in the e-learning uh, sessions. And, and, the, and the, it is assumed that this will make orientation to working at home and the training actually uh, a challenge. Ethan um, will continue. So, uh, given given the the study, the key study findings and the observations that we have made, uh, we have some views regarding uh, the enhancement of uh, uh, nurturing adaptive culture, and the uh, one of Oh, one of the issues that we present here relates to uh, what managers can do to, to, to ensure that actually uh, employees and managers are like adopted to the current situation because working from home is proving to be the way to go and things uh, seem not to be uh, uh, remaining uh, the same. So one of, one of the issues is ensuring that managers and employees mental health actually is 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 well prepared uh, for working uh, from home so there's a need to create that culture the adaptive culture so that employees and managers prepare their mental uh, their mental uh, state to be able to work from home and, and create a situation a, a home working environment that is actually close to the office environment uh, there's a need to continue to make productivity continue, continuity, to guarantee continuity. Amid this uh, teleworking, amid this uh, online working, uh, there's a need to maintain and sustain uh, productivity. 
is needed to increase capacity to reinvent the organizations and the teams and, and individuals to 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 this is to make a, a paradigm shift uh, from the traditional work environment to the formal based environment so this is uh, equal to reinventing organizations uh, in, in to to make them uh, uh, reform and come come out with with the new ways with the new methods uh, of work uh, we have uh, there's a need for skills enforcement acquisition uh, and transfer uh, Ethan and the uh, participants we, we in the previous slide we noted that uh, uh, there are so many tools that are being used in working from home but but these tools actually do not uh, do not create a physical face-to-face -face interaction, uh, but and, and, and that would mean fear of uh, fear for of, of knowledge loss and, uh, and and inadequate skills transfer among the workers. But with the incre increase in technology, especially the, um, the adoption of the up-to-date up-to-date skills uh, uh, tools, IT tools. Uh, we are we with 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 uh, with with an appropriate information management uh, guidelines. Skill enforcement is the way to go, and the and and and, and the, the other issue that 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 we that calls for ad adaptive uh, increased enhanced adaptive capacity is 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 the, the ability enhancing the ability of the organizations of the companies to actually increase revenue collection to ensure that revenue collection disruptions are minimized as much as possible uh, the, the 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 other issue relating to adaptive capacity is change uh, if if Organization, if managers and employers create a culture, a culture of, 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 of change, a flexible culture, it is, it is really highly likely that, um, that uh, change management in f transitioning from the traditional uh, work environment to the current uh, work environment will be, uh, will be enhanced. And the, and the increased ability to identify, to identify and the, and and the, and and the harness the opportunities that actually come come with uh, with home with home uh, based working and some of these opportunities in in a number of studies have indicated that actually uh, one of the opportunities is enhancing uh, enhancing uh, uh, high performance uh, many workers who are working from home they are indicating that their productivity is increasing because they are able to uh, you know. To balance work and then family, and then imp uh, improve the resource mobilization will be one of the driving forces for enhancing adoptive uh, culture. Uh, but there will be need to increase trust and team bonding uh, via online. You know, uh, there has been a thinking that perhaps bo team bonding is, is not possible under under virtual based learning. But it is possible. It is possible. Uh, building trust and then team bonding is possible. And then uh, there will be need to have uh, consistent legal and regulatory framework that actually makes provision for home-based learning, so that the current policies and the regulations on home uh, on, 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 on on employee performance are aligned, are are, are crafted, dra redrafted to suit to suit the needs. That the home working uh, needs. Uh, there are some common concerns that uh, emerged uh, from the study, and one of them relates to the low trust levels due to online working, uh, limited control over how empl employees actually manage their time, uh, the, the work life boundaries. Now that uh, employees are not in a physical in a physical touch with their supervisors, so there is that fear that you know how do they control uh, work life uh, balance there is also fear of power and authority where ma managers uh, feel that uh, when they are not in a physical presence you know with uh, in physical touch with employees um, th th that that uh, 
that uh, that uh, perceived authority and power tends to to disappear. But uh, the study brings out a number of benefits for working from home and and with and the dear participants, as you see, uh, and as you might have experienced, uh, you work from home, but then expenditure cost costs cost related. For example, to utilities, that's power, water, uh, transport, and the other costs, uh, actually such cost expenditure is reduced greatly. Uh, the e-learning opportunities to tap, to tap into. Now, this is the time when uh, all, all people, both employees and uh, managers, are, are relearning and unlearning and, and perhaps even forgetting uh, at, uh, deliberate forgetting what what the, the kind of knowledge that they feel now is no longer is no longer relevant. So the, the opportunities to for e-learning are now uh, at, at, at the peak. Uh, this working from home creates opportunities for strategic engagements, low turnover, uh, low turnover. It is because of uh, working from home being a motivating uh, factor in its whole. And uh, working from home uh, doesn't matter where you are in, in, the, in the world, the world over. So you, uh, talent, the, 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 you can acquire human resources from wherever in, in, the, in the world. And then the creation of flexible schedules. Uh, people will choose, you know, when to work, when to engage with the family, when to have leisure, when to relax. Uh, the, 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 if, even when... Uh, People are not feeling well. It is possible that you know you wake up, you are not feeling well, but you know you say in the afternoon at 2 p.m. I will have some energy after lunch and accomplish uh, this task. So work work seems to be uh, has been reported to be very very flexible uh, during uh, uh, under the online working uh, arrangement. Uh, Ethan. Uh, but um, we have to uh, to be mindful of uh, some costs that come that have come with online working, uh, especially investment in the online work applications. Uh, there is a need to to have uh, the online the online work applications and the. And that, 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 that is something that perhaps a number of companies and entrepreneurs had not looked at before. But, but we see that the budget, the budget for these online applications is going really to be up. Only that the, that the, the cost is felt in the short term and in the long, in the long term, uh, uh, benefits, uh, benefits uh, accrue. There's a need to in, in, increase, there will be need to increase response, response uh, times uh, for example, adjusting, uh, agreeing on the tasks to be com to be completed, and 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 the meeting tight schedules, meeting uh, timelines, and so on and so forth. Uh, only that uh, managers uh, feel that they they may not have enough control over how the employees spend their time, uh, how they spend their time when they are working away from the organization. <laughs> And and is some uh, some um, it it may be necessary to have uh, some budget on allowances, especially for electricity and internet, so that employees uh, are facilitated to be able to work from home without uh, without uh, uh, preventable limitations. Uh, Ethan. All right. Uh, uh, let's. Uh... Let's uh, give Dr. Everest to the IKO and an e round of applause, like I like saying. Uh, he may not hear, but um, at least you can say thank you. He can read in the comments. I say thank you for presenting. Um, you know, such he can also get that. You know, we had to grab him from his home, so to not not grab him from his home. He has had to save a lot of time on his schedule to to be able to present this to us. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Everest. And I can see lots of thank yous are already coming through. You can respond, Dr. Everest, accordingly. 
I, I know they are thanking you for revealing that. So, uh, I mean, for presenting. And so let's uh, switch now to the role of CEOs and HR in the emergence of work at home culture. I'm going to be super fast as much as I can because I really want to bring in our uh, panelists and then also give you some Q&A time. So there are some uh, important considerations here to take note of. And when I say considerations, uh, that's what they are really indeed. So let me first move this to get proper. Okay. Okay. Oops. All right. There's need for clear understanding of the of one's own roles and responsibilities is understanding what the new normal is and what it presents uh, us and being able to project short term, medium and long term. What does that mean? I remember bumping into someone recently say, okay, Ethan has the merchant of success. What do you have to tell us to do if, you know, what do we need to do if until the lockdown or what should we be doing in the next few days? I was like, no, Please do not plan for a few days, plan for months, uh, because that's what it is. It's a degree of appreciation of the HR function and its positioning as a strategic business partner. That's extremely important. And I can see we have uh, many uh, people on the line or on this, in this class who are in this webinar, I beg your pardon, who are not necessarily HR, but they are either CEOs, executive directors, or, or just next to that position. Please, HR function is, is, has always been important, but now even more so. Uh, it is also critical to establish how strong um, the diminishing or stock disappearing culture uh, is happening in this. And then we know to talk about whether the proposed, when I say, uh, whether the proposed change will be temp temporary or permanent. Now, what I've been advising people though is things are never going, going, are never going to go back to the normal. I mean, the world has changed forever. Uh, the question is by how much, by what percentage? And the, in, re, in response to that, I, I know I was, uh, when uh, September, you know, when the, you know, the terrorist attack of 9-11 happened, I was in the US then doing an internship. I was in my early twenties and then, the world changed forever in terms of how uh, security is handled at the airports, for example. So, and as such, how we interact with one another, how we work has changed forever. It will never be exactly the same way again, that I can guarantee you. Um, willingness and buying by employees of the emerging culture, that has to be considered, of course. We need to ascertain and reevaluate one's own value system. Is it in alignment? Do we need to put it back into alignment? Now, what can CEOs and HRs do in this context, in this moment, in this world? Now, here you see we are talking about the new organization. And as such, um, there is the strategy, the new emerging things around fin uh, marketing, finance, uh, human resources, and then operations, stock technology, and equipment. So from, these are the uh, five core things that we have to pay attention to as leaders in this particular context. Now, let's break down what I see or what we see as Success Africa. In terms of strategy, we need to assess internal capacity and readiness to change because there are people who are not ready to change. There are people who are struggling or even something as basic, I shouldn't say quite basic because it could be, it could be basic to me, but not basic to someone else. You know, there are people who are just struggling to have online meetings. They are calling them a pain in the neck, okay, already. So what is the internal capacity uh, to work from home, for example, I'll be told. We need to merge the positive elements of the old culture to the emerging one. So. When there is change, change does not mean that everything old is bad, that everything old is, change is not always positive and wonderful. 
And just like the past is not always negative, is neither positive or negative, but there's always something wonderful to either culture. So how do we merge the two uh, from working face to face to remote work? There's, there has to be, a bar. so you need to think about that from your own perspective, what is that? We need to align the emerging culture to the strategic thrust and the institutional priorities. So what that means is to say, okay, these are my institutional priorities. Uh, those are core. But now with this new emerging culture, how do I make sure that the culture has remained or that my strategy aligns so that there is proper support for either? Because then you have to ask yourself, okay, with this new thing, and it also means that your strategy may have to, not may, your strategy has to change. What you had planned in, the, in terms of um, as per first quarter, if you have not started realigning and repositioning and you're still waiting for things to be normal, I'm telling you, you are in for a big shock. So you have to be re, you know, repositioning. So the, the key word, the big word now is not to panic, but to pivot. How are you pivoting your strategy in the new environment and yet to still realize the priorities or the goals that you have. So you need to sit down with your team and re-strategize. So, okay, this is what's going on. How do we reposition ourselves? How do we re-strategize? And if you haven't done that, you have, please don't wait until the lockdown is open because then we don't know how, when it will happen. No one knows the exact date and even if it happens, it may not be all those fully open and the world will take its own time anyway. So you need to think at that level. You need to identify low hanging fruits to enable quick wins. What do I mean by uh, hanging fruits, low hanging fruits? It could be, for example, you already have, five, I'm seeing people from uh, the non for profit uh, space. So, low hanging fruit might mean that the people where you already have uh, good relationships, let's say with your donors or grantees or whatever it is, can you strengthen that relationship immediately uh, further? Because then that is a quick reach. Uh, for if you are in business, uh, for example, I've, I've, I've seen uh, people in the banking sector, for example, who, who is within your, who needs, who, which business are you seeing? For example, uh, if I was in the banking sector, you know that the industry in, for example, in the delivery, in the home delivery space is exploding. So how can you reach out to that particular segment to, because you know their business is exploding, the demand is exploding, but most likely they do not have enough resources to fulfill the demand on their table. So you reach out to them, you get your sales team. Now you may not focus on the brick and mortar for who, where there was big, but there is these other industry. Possibly there's someone who is planning to open a, a, you know, a factory in, to do health related stuff. So that's low hanging fruit right now. Those are the businesses that are super active. You reach out. And of course, when I give these kinds of examples, think about your own industry and say, okay, what's my low hanging fruit? Low hanging fruit means you can, with the limited resource, time and energy, reach out, grab that fruit, grab that opportunity into your hands to serve you and serve the world, okay? When it comes to marketing, you need to optimize your website for mobile. What I mean by that, if your website is not easily accessible or through mobile, then you're in big trouble because stats tell us most like when I place ads, uh, for example, I notice when I look at my metrics, usually the majority of people access our content at Success Africa just using mobile, not uh, your uh, typical laptop. So if your website is not easily accessible, I mean visible on, on mobile, then you reach out, you need to reach out to someone technical to help you out. And if you don't know how to, you can reach out to us, we can point you to the right person. And we actually have someone in house who can do that. I need to maximize social media and mobile, of course, um, because the good news is that more, a lot of people are now online, so you need to do that. You need to think about remote customer service. How can you service your team online? Right now, this is the time to train your team on how to use the phone, how to serve people online. How can they use um, online chat, whether it is um, chatting online, whether it is to use chat bots and all that. So you, those are things you need to be thinking about.
When it comes to finance, which is the third pillar you have to be thinking about, is you need to look at your fixed costs again. So uh, one of my uh, colleagues at Success Africa was asking me, hey, by the way, we may need to, to look at the office. Do we need all that office space? Okay. Do, do we need all the, the three offices at our location? So that is definitely something we'll be making a decision on this month. So because that's a fixed cost, do we need all that space? Most likely not. So you need to look at your situation also. You need to renegotiate uh, loan repayments. I, I overheard, um, you know, I, I listened into a part of the presentation and I liked how, um, I actually saw Robert online, Robert Wanok of DFCU thinking, saying, oh, by the way, in case you need to talk to us to re-strategize or to you have any questions, please come to us. Let's, we can talk about how to rearrange things. But I, I, he did, you may say, he's talk about loan repayments, but I believe that's the message. Say, look, we are willing to sit down, talk with you and figure out what's possible. Uh, he wasn't promising anything, but that's what it means. Meaning, you go to the if you have a loan, don't don't fear as an organization. If you have an organizational loan or a personal loan, go talk to the banks. They are open to listening, and you renegotiate. Uh, it might mean that right now this is not the time as HR and CEO to approve uh, bank, um, you know, getting bank loans. This is not the time for the car loan, okay? Uh, but if we are those other loan repayments, you could have you could have uh, approved someone to get a loan under the auspices of the organization. Now you now uh, salary has been slashed. So what do you do? You may have to press the call. Hey, by the way, my team is not in a good place now. Is there a way we can renegotiate this? If you feel that your weight can be helpful, are you able to pay your staff for the next six months if no revenue comes in? And if I were you, I would even think for the next one year because uh, the message I've been communicating is typically it takes 12 to 18 months to develop a vaccine. And therefore, the global experts are you know, uh, projecting that that's the amount of time it might take things to normalize. So when you're projecting, think not even in month, think in the next one to one and a half years, um, you know, if, they, if you're not able, are you able to pay your staff? And if not, what can you do? What could be the new sources of income? At uh, yesterday, uh, I believe it was yesterday, uh, Julia, who's hosting, asked a question, you know what, every day we need to ask ourselves the question, what could be our new sources of income? And I felt that was a brilliant question. And that's something you have to be asking yourself. Uh, where are the new sources of revenue? Where are the new sources of donations? Uh, if you're in the non-for-profit, how else can we generate money if we are non-for-profit? This is the time uh, for organizations. I, I saw my, my friend Rita Chiro, who heads uh, Uganda Women Network, that look, this is the time where I know before we're saying that the non-for-profits have to think like enterprises, like businesses, but now even more so. You have to think like a business, like an enterprise, uh, to be able to survive and thrive during this time and think of the what sources of income can we generate, okay? Develop and activate risk stroke crisis management plan. You have to have that to, again, based on projections, say, okay, if there is no money, what? If we, if we are to operate at 50% staff capacity, what does that mean? If 90% of our staff have to operate from home, what does that mean? You need to think about all those uh, options and develop a plan step by step accordingly. With the human resource, you need to embrace new approaches to work, like holocracy. Um, you know, it's, to be able to support the that support the work at home culture, holacracy and um, Pamela is now equipped to deliver that at your workplace. So with holacracy, you are able to everyone is able to keep each other accountable. Everyone is super clear about what they want, and I mean what they are uh, supposed to be delivering, and everyone knows what everyone is doing, and everyone is able to tell automatically whether they are delivering or not, and everyone is able to push each other. And if you need that kind of support, um, you can talk to us, you can leave your uh, name and email and we, 
your email and phone number and reach out to you. You need to enhance accountability and uh, remote performance management tools. So that, that has to happen because if, if you are not able to, again, like you notice 64% of the staff I feel they are not prepared to work from home, therefore you have to figure out a way to equip them on how to do that. You need to review job descriptions, personal specifications, employment contract and KPIs because then a KPI that was relevant yesterday is not relevant today. Uh, we are chatting, one of our clients is telling us, look, uh, for us, you know, there are those forms you have to feel that you've been in the field and our, our donors are saying, look, if there is no field work, no payment. So that means you need to also renegotiate, for example, if you're from the non-for-profit space to negotiate with the original donor and what are the, what are those key things that people can be accountable to when they're at home to still appear productive, but also achieve the outcomes and objectives of the organization. You need to review all that. You need to review critical documents, policies, plans, processes, and systems to see how they, uh, whether they are still in alignment, because some of those things are now obsolete. They, they cannot work. So again, you, you will need to start ranking and say on a scale of zero to 10, um, if we are to stay in this kind of state, how relevant is this? So you need to prepare for the best case scenario, <laughs> you know, moderate case scenario and worst case scenario. Worst case is that we are still locked away for months to come. And so best case is everything is open and everyone is back flying and uh, in, in the air. I don't see that happening immediately. I'm a motivational speaker, I'm uh, optimistic, definitely. But the older I get, the more pragmatic I become. So it's definitely not going to happen all normal instantly and immediately, no. So you have to plan that accordingly. Now let's talk about the fifth element, which is operations, technology, and equipment. You need to reorganize task delivery accordingly. You need to acquire uh, supporting equipment for new situations, batteries for laptops. So if people were, you find, uh, for example, in office spaces, like where our office uh, is, you find that power is rarely off. So meaning someone can survive on a battery that runs for one hour. It's not the case now. Okay. Can, we, can there be licenses for online meeting platforms like these, like what we're using here soon? Uh, facilitation for data, airtime, and electricity. So, and of course, you need to become data driven, looking at the stats, uh, because, and with technology, you're able to be helped in all these uh, cases. Okay, so it would also be good to know before I, I invite, uh, no, let me, so before I, I invite our next. Um, because I ran through this satay. First of all, is this useful? Uh, the data, what have you found most useful? Um, that, okay, people have been chatting away, that's great. So uh, I hope, so it would be good to know what have you found most to be most useful in the role and what I'm recommending. If I bring on an exciting panelist uh, that we are going to um, introduce or engage. Uh, Robert Wanok from DFC says is very useful and uh, cool. So I'm going to, and you can let me know what you found most useful. And uh, right now I'm going to invite our um, panelists. We are privileged to have a panelist from British Council. And uh, so Diana, Diana Namisere Kauma is an associate uh, member of uh, the you know, Chartered Institute of uh, Personal Development, that's CIPD, but most importantly, she's the HR business partner of Sub-Saharan Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa for British Council. She has over 12 years of HR management across banking and international NGO sectors that include Opportunity Bank, Save the Children, and currently British Council. Her current role covers 19 countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, focusing on organizational development, change management, and learning and development, 
and also to align and align to business strategy. Okay, so uh, what I find also very telling uh, from Diana, what you may not know, is apart from the fact that she's been working uh, with British Council for all these years, and in the besides covering over nineteen countries, uh, not over covering nineteen countries. British Council is one of those, um, you know, they have one of the most efficient operations you ever find. I was a training consultant with them for over 10 years, and they are really thorough in terms of how they do their stuff. But why we are keen on bringing in Diana on board uh, to communicate to us is for the last three years, British Council has been encouraging their staff to work remotely, and Diana has been at the heart of helping managers, leaders to realign for them at British Council, for example, you can, um, like for Diana herself, for example, she works only two days in a week at the office. The other three, she works from home. So she already understands this work culture concept and dynamic. So we, we, we are privileged to have such a person who's already preparing, even yesterday when we were talking, she was talking to another person in another country, I believe South Africa or someone you know, preparing the managers on how to support them with this concept of work culture. So whereas for us, uh, circumstance has forced us, uh, British Council was already ahead of the curve, uh, thinking to work remotely to offer the sense of flexibility for people to be able to work both from home and in the office. So uh, at this particular moment, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me, Julia, is Diana um, enabled to communicate to us? Yes, she's actually able to unmute herself. Uh, okay, great. So, ladies and gentlemen, without much ado, please uh, welcome with me, Diana. Give her <laughs> a warm welcome, a warm e-welcome. Say welcome, Diana. I'm sure she will see that later in the something. Okay, good. At least you've been welcomed, uh, Diana. Diana, can you hear me? Hello. Hello, Diana. Okay, great. Diana, can you hear me? I can hear you. I'm just curious whether you're able to hear me. Yes, I can. Sorry, my um, connection is quite unstable this afternoon, but I can okay. hear the, the good news, though, is that uh, at least you sound clear, at least the last few words I've had. So, Diana, welcome. And uh, you're already receiving lots of welcomes from uh, people, um, from Ashatu to someone on a Nokia 3.1 to Everest, so from Juliet, so they are welcome. So welcomes are fl flying in from Stanley. So just so there is a warm welcome. So then I have a quick question for you. It's so you've been working remotely, and of course you've been man. You you're leading 19 countries um, in sub-Saharan Africa. So for leaders who are listening in right now, whether live or in the future recording, how can in this whereby it's a new culture? How can they uh, enable or help their teams to become more productive while working from home, which is a new territory for them? Diana, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Hello, people. Yes, um, I can hear you. My connection is quite unstable this afternoon. So can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you. Very well. Can you repeat? Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, can you repeat the question? Because I missed that. Okay. Or so you the, just want me to share my experience. With so the you? question is how can leaders? Uh, CEOs, MDs, or man HR managers help their teams to become more productive uh, while working from home. And mind you, already there were issues in that Uganda is one of the law. For example, Uganda is, has been having challenges uh, on the issue of productivity. So now there's even a bigger worry to say, okay, if I'm not able to see someone, how will I manage productivity? So how can the leaders here those now and in future who listen to this recording, help their teams to be more productive by working remotely. Did you hear the question now? 
Yes, thank you, thank you. Um, Phil, I, I, I must say that uh, I, have, I have been working from home for about three years. I have two, three days working from home. But also, um, I have participated, I work with British Council as a HR business partner, and I have participated in uh, developing policies and ensuring that this working at home culture takes effect within British Council, not just in Uganda, but um, in countries across uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, where British Council operates about 19 countries in Sub-Saharan Africa. So, uh, my experiences as a beneficiary working from home, but also as, a, as, as an HR advising leaders, advising line managers and executives on how to embrace uh, this work at home culture. I must say that what we are in now is, 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 is different from the norm. And actually how I refer to it is we are at home in a crisis trying to work. So the variables there sort of differ from the normal working from home that has been there before uh, this crisis. So if, if I could just talk about uh, working from home in this crisis where we, it's, it's sort of like forced, forced on us, but there are lots of things to learn from, from there. First of all, I want to say that working from home thrives in an open environment, an environment of openness and trust. As, as, as following the research, and I saw concerns around line managers or supervisors saying, how do, we, uh, how do we supervise the work? How do we ensure that delivery was made? You know, it's like letting go of your, of your, of your, of your, of your power, of your authority but it thrives a lot in a culture of openness and trust yeah, that has to be created. And we as HRs really have to create that culture even before you know, uh, working from home. The other is, um, um, I've also realized that you talked about putting policies in place, frameworks, frameworks in place to work from home. And that's very key for us as HR people, putting those policies in place so that um, line managers, supervisors have, a, and, and actually team members, individuals have a framework, a clear the framework within which um, um, the organization is, um, is an operating. So us as HR people um, and the executives that are here, CEOs or senior senior um, leaders in the organization. It's important to think about uh, think about what's what's the business strategy and how how is this working from home going to you know meet uh, meet the business strategy. It's important to think about now we HR people we are a people people it's a people profession so. As we are coming, uh, as we are coming up with these policies, it's important to think about you as a person. What's the personal benefit? What's the personal uh, effect? Think about it as you as a person. Think about it as the other person. How is it going to benefit maybe another person? Then how is it going to benefit uh, the organization as we, are, as we come up with this, with this policy? Usually when we think about these policies as people and how they affect us as people, how they affect our life, our work-life balance, how they affect our families, and or how they affect the family of, of, of a mother who is, who, is, who is a high flyer, how it's going to, to affect, um, sorry, I am a mother and I can't <laughs> separate that from my work. So how, how is that going to affect the, the family? The mother who is, you know, a high flyer in the organization, um, do you see that if you put this policy in place, you are going to retain this, this high flyer longer or she's going to actually decide to stay at home and look after her family? 
how is it how is going is it going to affect uh, think about the millennials who i who think about who are into the gig economy they may not want to sit in your office for the whole of eight hours yet they can do the work you have given them in two hours the work for eight hours as in two three hours and go away think about how to you know capture those ones as well um and think about uh in the research uh doctor talked about in increasing um um productivity for example if someone is going to reduce the time in traffic the two hours in the morning and the two hours going back home in traffic and use that to you know to to focus on a, a high level document or coming up with a document for a high level meeting you know and increase that productivity while they're at home so those are the everyday things that we need to think about um, as we are coming up with this uh, with these policies um, yes there has to be uh, infrastructure for it. What's the technology that uh, the, the that is available within the, uh, the organization to, in, to ensure that it actually works? Um, what are the collaboration tools? Yes, the, uh, laptops, internet. Um, but beyond that, what are the collaboration tools? And, and have we trained the uh, staff to actually use these collaboration tools. Have we, um, what's the word? Have we, have we created awareness? Have we sold this, uh, not just to staff, but beginning with the leaders? Have we sold it? How are we going to sell it to the leaders that this actually works? And it works differently for the different organization, uh, depending on, 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 business and, and your organization strategy. So the leaders have to embrace it. The leaders have to em embrace the technology and the different collaboration tools that are being used. Um, in, in British Council, there are lots of you know, collaboration tools to use from one to another um, in meetings, planning meetings, online calendars, uh, notebooks, online notebooks, share uh, what cloud documents, but I can tell you that um, catching up with those is also an effort. So we also need to be mindful that as we introduce this, catching up with that the news, the technology is also an effort for many of us and uh, in, in, in if you're familiar with change management, you have to, you know, handhold first of all the leaders and also handhold the staff to ensure that um, the pace of change is not um, overwhelming the staff. Um, benchmarking what is happening in the other organisations, and and it, it, it's it's uh, it's very good to see that um, Ethan and your team you uh, you have. You know, you went ahead with this initiative of, of doing this research. And uh, us as HR, it's important to benchmark and see what's happening in the other organization, what is working and how can we adapt that. And um, if internal service, how do people feel about it? Some will, will be interested in working from home. Others will tell you that, ah, I cannot work from home. I have to. To go to office, I have to wake up in the morning and go to office. Others will see it like, wow, this is the best thing that has happened, ever happened to me. So take a survey with the, in the organization so that even when you're coming up with these policies, they are, it's, it, the decision is data driven. There's evidence for it. And staff have uh, participated in that as well. So how how do we help how how do we support uh leaders team leaders line managers to to actually um lead remotely like managing remotely first of all we 
it, um, I think it's important to for that adjustment to happen for the leaders as well, for the leaders of teams, and uh, to realize that it is important to have clear deliverables for the team so that if I am home, I know, I know the tasks that are ahead of me, maybe in the week or in the month, I know that the deliverables, the deliver, deliverables are clear so even if a line manager has concerns like the team members are going to you know get involved in, in in other things in maybe a side hustle somewhere because they are not being seen the deliverables are very clear that someone needs to you know hit at the end of the at, at the end of the week or at the end of the month so the the performance the performance system has to be robust in that in, 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 in a culture of home working. Two, catch-ups with, with regular catch-ups uh, with members, and they don't have to be like really long weekly meetings as speaking to someone who has started working from home in this crisis, and they were telling me that they are tired of their meetings. They have, every day they have meetings, and the meetings are over one hour. And I thought, no, that's not advisable. A one hour online meeting every day for your team, it, it may not be necessary, really. People will get tired, but there has to be those regular, regular catch-ups. Um, the other thing is um, the well-being, ensuring the well-being of your staff. Now we are talking about a crisis in, in this crisis. Even in a virtual environment, or more so in a virtual environment, uh, staff need to know. People need to know that their leader cares, so more so even in a virtual environment. So it's important to create, uh, to create spaces for that. Uh, in British Council, we do what we call virtual coffee hangouts, no frills, that's what we say. Um, think, think about a space where, you know, like how you walk in office, where you walk at a kitchen point and you have a conversation or, at a, a water dispenser and you meet a colleague and have a conversation there, create, um, let's encourage uh, leaders to create such spaces, such virtual spaces, spaces. A 15 minute, 30 minute informal virtual meeting where you're going to talk about, in this current situation, you don't even need to talk about um, COVID-19. You can talk about urban gardening, you can talk about cooking, you can talk about your children, if you have children. You know, just those conversations, corridor conversations we have in, in the actual office, let's bring them to the virtual, to the virtual space as well. 15, 20 minutes and book them in the diary. And so people will start opening up. People will start opening up and that will be really, really helpful. You don't know how much. It's actually therapy, especially during this time, but even in, in, in the normal. Um, maybe I'll stop there. Yes, okay, great. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Diana. Can we give Dan a round of applause? <laughs> a round of E applause. <laughs> Can give thanks for. I especially like to those uh, last tips, uh, things like to even do a survey. Talking about a survey that Diana is recommending. If you feel that you actually need an independent entity, let's uh, you know we can come in as Success Africa. Sometimes uh, staff feel a little jittery when it's internally done. So you could engage us as a third party that that is independently done. Then you will get actually more. Um, honest answers, if I may put it that way. So just know that that's something we can actually provide. So I would like to open it up now. I know we have a few, just a few minutes to go, uh, really. Uh, so one, it would be good to know, it could be your comment um, or question. Uh, it could be for me or Diana um, or Dr. Everest. I saw, you know, I'm seeing lots of thank yous and round of applause. And I know someone had talked about, um, someone had, Rollins had said, uh, was giving you feedback then, and that good point there, working from home is 
working from home in a crisis, openness and trust are key. Yeah, so in a crisis, openness and trust are key. I always say that trust is currency. So you can raise your hand if you want to make a brief comment or a question. Um, uh, Consulate is saying, thank you so much, Diana, very helpful experience shared. Yeah, Diana is living at the, the front of, uh, of is at the forefront of all this. So uh, please let us know if you could, you know, post a question or comment. And then we, if you have, let me see if there's anyone raising their hand. Uh, there should be an image of a hand in case you, I can give it up to have an opportunity for one person if you want to speak live. Uh, we can open it up for you. Um, if not, you can also type in your message. It would also be good to know, Type, please type away, what is the one thing that you learn and how are you going to apply it in your life? So I mean at the workplace, because at Success Africa, we believe in application, not just information, but application and transformation. So if you can take one idea and transform your workplace, for us, we would be very happy that we added value. So please type in the chat box. Also, when you type in, it commits it to your brain. Say, ah, okay, I made this particular commit commitment. So I would really love to see what is it that um, you're going to do differently as a result of as a result of this. So because when you do, then we are able to tell and say, okay, as a result of our presentation. Uh, so and so was able to commit and did this. That's our payment, uh, so to speak. So for us, it would be very, very critical indeed, okay, in terms of the call to action. And again, the, so it is what are the top two lessons acquired from this session and what are the three things you're going to do different to support the emerging work at home culture. So you could write two and three things in your notebook, but for now in the chat box, you can type it away, or you may be having a question, and then we'll also be telling you how you can access uh, these slides and the recording if you hang up to the very end. Uh, let me see, there seems to be some questions uh, here. Uh, let me see. Seems to be some questions, let me pick them here. Consulate, you can see Consulate has a question. Uh, wow. Uh, Juliet says, uh, critical to facilitate leaders to put in place business continuity plans. Sophie Jemba asks, can Diana share practical ways of managing costs, especially fixed costs in this period, while considering the survival of the employees? Uh, Diana, kind of confirm that you're able to hear me because there are other questions I have, then I will give you an opportunity to answer them uh, one by one specifically. Kindly confirm if you're hearing yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Very okay, well. fantastic. That's question one from Diana. From I beg your pardon, from Sophie. Then um, consulate says uh, Diana, did BC British Council offer a special allowance to power and internet for those who work from home? Did they reduce your transport allowance? Okay, that's an interesting question. I, I, I hope uh, British Council terms and conditions allow you to uh, share that. Um, I'm not, yeah, please share if you're able to, if not, if the conditions okay. do not allow you, you can share. Um, Stella says- okay. You want me to share now? No, I'm-, I'm Okay. This, Sat, I prefer that you, you answer them all at once, so just so long as you take note. As Stella says, they need to focus on output. That's the, the lesson. Uh, Ruth says, thank you so much for the present. As a question for Diana, how do you encourage people to promote a culture of openness, especially when it had been a challenge before, but is now a necessity, especially with the remote work becoming the new normal? That, that's been um, a question over and over again. Uh, from other webinars we've held before, so it would be interesting. Um, Susan, Susan, who uh, is on Galaxy S9, uh, thank you for the presentation, Diana. What's your experience in terms of gender perspectives in working from home? Ah, that's a biggie. That's a biggie. Uh, many thanks for the presentation. Uh, 
Juliet. Juliet says also critical think through the legal issues presented by this crisis. Yeah, in future we are we are planning to um, hold a session around the legal uh, the, the legal stuff. I'm seeing Samuel. Is this our uh, Samuel? Is this our Doctor Samuel from UCU? The the gentleman who uh, helped us with the research also. I know he was away. Just Samuel, kindly type privately that I know that you're in, that I introduce you. Um, what advice do you give to business owners who still believe it is still business as usual and are not reading signs of the time? Yeah, so Joseph, I'll answer that question myself. So Diana, uh, those are the hot questions. Uh, indeed, and they are so. If you kindly keep it as brief as possible, because and as practical as possible, just also give you a hint what I was already planning to do, uh, which I see you evoked a lot of interest in this. If um, Diana may not have all the time right now to answer all the questions, but what I was planning to do to request. And it would be good to hear feedback from the team was to have actually a session, just Diana presenting to us, because I know there is a lot and uh, there is a lot behind her experience and all this. So if that's, if that's something that you're quit, that you'd be open to, then some of these questions can actually be, if that's not something you'd be open to. Given the number of questions to Diana, I can see you'd be interested. So, but it would still be good to get confirmation. Uh, if this is something that you'd be interested in having Diana to have like at least a full hour uh, to share real experiences, and then we can engage all this, you can say, just type the word, yes, please. Then if we see that there is a huge interest, then we can arrange, since we, have, uh, we already have a good relationship with uh, British Council and Diana, we can bring her on board, then we alert you when that session is on. I can see already yes is applying here. Hida says, thank you so much. My question to the Dan is, how do you deal with managers who don't respond to communication or never call you back for feedback? <laughs> yeah. Diana, I wish you could start with that one. That's a big one on communication. So I'm seeing lots of responses saying they would want to have you again, Diana. Uh, so we'll definitely communicate at the right time. So Diana, over to you. Keep it short and snappy. At least people are saying they would want to have you back. So answer that which you feel you can in the moment, and then we'll have another session where we'll give you for at least minimum 40 minutes, and then you are there. Diana, over to you. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, yes, that last one is, uh, is loaded, yeah. and uh, <laughs> there are many factors in it, and I wish I could have a conversation with the person to <laughs> know more about the, the environment in which um, that question is asked. But on allowances, the practical, yeah, the pr 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 practicability of working from home. Um, British Council does not give transport allowances. Yeah. Your, your salary, your gross salary is, you know, everything. But it, we um, aided, the organization aids the the, the homeworking by uh, providing internet bundles. Uh, yeah, so this is part of uh, communication costs, but it's also part of um, what we call promoting uh, staff's well being, promoting a work life balance that is very, it's very key in, in, in our organization values. And that's where, that's where it all starts from. Someone talked about promoting a culture of openness and trust. It starts from the values of the organization. What, what are the leaders promoting in the organization? And well, there are values, but is there a deliberate effort to actually leave these values? I know that we, we, we have these values all on paper, but but I know that as HR people, as a people profession, many times we struggle with leaders actually leaving these values. That is, you know, an ongoing struggle and ongoing discussion. That because um, in the organization where I work, uh, there's a deliberate effort to actually uh, leave the values, uh, which one of them is 
valuing people, uh, mutuality. So promoting well-being is very important. And so this policy of uh, working from home, uh, we call it flexible working policy, and under it has working from home, it has a, a flexi time, all those are to promote uh, well-being and work-life balance. So against that policy is where um, people are provided with uh, internet, uh, internet, uh, internet bundles or yeah, whatever. People may require to actually access, uh, access not just uh, internet or Zoom, but actually remotely access work, uh, platforms, information, re remotely access them away from the, from the office. That is actually enabled. Uh, I can remotely access all, all my systems on my mobile phone or on the laptop. And, and also, and I saw this, this, is, this was also a good point in, 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 a, in Dr. Everest's uh, presentation, that you can hire um, talent from anywhere. So because um, we look at it as a closed global village, hiring talent from, well, I can be in Uganda and working for another country in, 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 in Sub-Saharan Africa, that, that also pushes the organization to be able to, um, um, to, to invest in such things as this, but there is no, uh, there is no transport allowance really. Uh, what else? Promoting, uh, how do we promote? Oh, a gender perspective. Um, I can tell you that uh, we, have, uh, we have more ladies that, uh, 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 that embrace this. And I can also say that it is, it is what we pitch most of the times as a way to retain talent because we, uh, the organization, British Council does, doesn't pay very high. We, the policy is to pay within the 50th percentile. Yeah, and, uh, the HR people will understand average, like in the market, the 50th percentile, because we are a UK charity. So yeah, we pay in the 50th percentile. We will not pay like, um, like, like the banks or like UN, like, yeah. So what we usually pitch when we are, when we are, attract, we are attracting talent is the work-life balance, the well-being policies. And when actually people join, you can find that many, especially, especially ladies and especially mothers will stay longer because I think now I go and look for a job and then there is another job where I'm going to work 11 or 12 hours uh, a day. So there is that work-life balance. There is that, the, the, the guys will, will stay because of the open culture, open culture because they have the freedom to, um, to innovate, to be creative, to, that uh, that independence that uh, is very is very typical, guys. Sorry for being um, maybe I'm being very <laughs> stereotypic here, but here yeah, it may not the the flexible working, the working from home may not attract the guys, but the the independence in how you do your work within your sphere of influence that one also retains the guys because you'll be you'll be innovative. You will think about you know, things to do outside your work within the organization. So that is, I don't know if I'm answering the question of the gender perspective, but, but that is how. Uh, British Council Uganda, I can tell you in Uganda, Uganda, I can tell you that over 80% of staff are ladies. Um, allow, promoting a culture of openness, uh, sort of touched that. But it starts with the leaders, really. This starts with the leaders. And if, that, if leaders are not ready to, to be open, especially in this era that we are working in, 
with the crisis, even after the crisis, transparency is going to be very key because uh, we have, I'm sure I, you HR people, you will, you will tell me that, that, that you have the best staff. It's a generation of, 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 of very, I mean, I mean, brilliant people out there, very exposed because of the technology and, and all. And so gone are those days when you're going to hold on to information, to, you're the only one who knows stuff. So it's important that people are open, leaders are open to what's going on in the organization. Because if they are not open, you're going to lose stuff because people will still know. Probably people will know things before they even get to the leaders. So openness is really very important in this time. Openness in terms of what is the organization planning to do and okay, this is what we are planning to do. What do you people think? Still at the end of the day, the organization, the leaders have the upper hand, but consult and see what comes out there. And in so doing, you're actually creating uh, an environment of trust. Give it to, to give a project to a group of, you know, mid-level, a mix of mid-level junior officers and tell them to run with it, give them a framework within which to work and see what they can, they can come up with, things like that. Yeah, any, any question I haven't answered? Okay, so I think you, I do not think, I believe you did cover the basis, so to speak. Uh, the, there's something, let me see, someone had asked a question around business, which I promised to answer. Let me look for it. Um, someone, uh, a question to pass to, Leonard also has a question here. Question panel, I envisage a situation where some departments have more work than others. E.g. someone in the stores department may not have much to offer in terms of working from home. Um, how do you handle the situation of some officers having more workload than others? Everest, do you have an answer to that? Uh, as quickly yeah, yeah, as possible. Okay. If, if, um, uh, thank you very much and thank you very much. Hi, uh, you're yeah. quite very faint. Can you please speak a little louder? You can. Am I, am I clear, clear now? Now I can hear you. Did you hear the question? So I had the question. Yeah. I had the question. Ethan, some, some, the concern is that um, some uh, employees have more work uh, than others. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, 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 my take is that uh, that is that is uh, a perception which at times is uh, is founded on on reality uh, but, but, but uh, we cannot we cannot uh, at the moment uh, judge and take that position because uh, as the, one of the presenters indicated i think it, it, diana indicated uh, we are under we are, we are, we, are, we are working online currently because we are forced. It wasn't uh, in, in in most instances. It wasn't a, de a deliberate a, de a deliberate choice. So, um, uh, one of the take home uh, that perhaps we're going to 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 see is um, the HR managers and the CEOs uh, coming back on board and redesigning perhaps the HR manuals to see to it that uh, everyone is is brought uh, on board. Yeah. Uh, it could it could be that uh, some some workers have uh, performed essential what is perceived as more essential uh, roles than others, but but note that uh, some staff have actually more work than others. It could be the degree the the, the perception in terms of uh, some worker being regarded as essential and so staff are involved on a daily basis in, in a, a series of meetings and then some other staff perceived are not have uh, essential uh, performing essential roles here. Okay, cool. Thank you, Everest. And what are most... I, what I most, Pardon me? 
I just wanted to add to that and yeah. say that when you're coming up with, with a, a policy, you also have to think about which staff can work from home and which, which depending on the nature of their jobs and which can't work, or even what part of, of, of the job can be performed actually at home and what part of the job uh, cannot be performed at home. Yeah. Okay, cool. And, and the other thought that comes to mind, Tim, is how about, for example, this, what I'm foreseeing, is, what I'm foreseeing personally is people need to expand their skill set. Someone may be a store manager indeed, but now they're at home. Can we teach them customer service skills where they can service people on, on the phone or online? So there has to be that versatility for people. Right now, in the environment we are living in, just a one dimensional person is not going to cut it. So there should be someone who is able to be versatile enough. And that talks, that brings up the question of us really equipping people, okay, in terms of skill sets and abilities. The other day, you know, someone was asking it, I would love to hear your perspective on this. How do you address leave issues given the current situation? And, and um, you know, just comment briefly on that, then I answer the question from Jemba about business. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the situations that, yes, we are, uh, the organization is grappling with uh, right now, also given the, um, the financial implications of the, of the crisis. Um, but at, at the moment, leave is, is, is still as is because uh, many people are, a number of people are working, even those that where business is low and are not working, what, what you can think of is, is uh, we talked about in the research, there was something about e-learning, how can staff use this time to actually um, Learn, a new, learn new skills that will help them after, um, after, the, after the crisis. And so staff can use this time to learn, to learn new skills. And again, that's when um, HR will, and line managers will come on to you know, talk about uh, the learning needs that are required and how those can be, can be, can be delivered uh, okay, cool. using E. And the other The other thing I want to say is that staff can be reassigned in, 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 uh, in units that are actually have work right now. Yeah, cool. Yeah, and I'm also hearing the, indeed some of those staff can support other staff who are loaded. They can ask for help and also uh, re-engage these people. And lastly, I want to respond to this question, then I'll tell you the next steps, how we can take this forward. And that is a question from Joseph. He asked, what advice do you give to business owners who still believe it is still business as usual and they're not reading signs of the times? Well, Joseph, that's one of the reasons as Success Africa, we stepped up to the plate and said, you know what? We need to start educating people. This is actually our eighth webinar <laughs> during this lockdown. Um, and if you... If you, need to, um, if you need links to the previous webinars on different skill sets from working productive at home to leading, uh, you know, to minimizing distractions at home, we have all those recordings. Some are for payment, uh, but at least the free ones, this is the eighth webinar. So we've been educating people saying, look, <laughs> things have changed. The ship has moved. So for me, my advice is to, to think uh, you know, when, when you have to think like a military strategy. So when a military strategist is thinking, uh, and I'm told over 90% of military missions are successful, why they think through all scenarios. They think, okay, if we are attacked and overwhelmed, this is what we'll do. If we are winning, this is what we'll do. If one of us is injured, this is what we'll do. So you have to, we have to get business owners to think, worst case scenario, what do I do? If this income source is totally locked out, what do I do? That's how we are, those are the conversations we are having at Success Africa right now. Uh, not right now, since the lockdown, uh, since the crisis started. 
So we are pivoting and shifting things. And you'll be seeing more of those things down the road. So if you're a business owner, please, the ship has moved. Sit down with your team and think, okay, if this income source is total of, what can we do? Now, for business owners, here is a hot tip. I, and I assume those of you are a business owner. Here is a hot tip for you. Just think at this question. What does the market need now that I can provide? And then that's what you do. That's how you service people. I, I, we know of a client who has now moved into home deliveries. Okay, that's not something I want to get into myself or as success Africa yet. We are thinking of other things. But you see, that's someone who's thinking on their feet quickly. They're saying, look, the ship has moved. It's going this direction. I better go there. That would be my, my uh, advice to business owners right away. Things have shifted. Um, do you have a category who work full time from home but not mix? Now, there are some of these questions. Well, what we'll do is Julia is taking some of these questions down. So we will respond to um, some of these questions later. Um, I'm saying that, do you have a category of staff who work full time from home but not a mix where some days the employees in office? Is it so? How do you handle their annual leave? Um, Diana says full time working at home is not currently encouraged unless in unique circumstances. Although currently we are all working from home, there is also need for social face to face interaction with colleagues. Fantastic. So, in terms of moving forward, would encourage you to read the book Who Moved My Cheese? That's one of our favorites at Success Africa um, by Spencer Johnson, I believe, and uh, Ken Blanchard. So that's a good book. There are also some short videos um, online that you can access. And also to let you know that, um, by the way, please type in the message. Uh, again, one thing I noticed on a few people typed in what they are going to do differently as a result of this presentation. And also, if you want to follow us, uh, if you want us to follow up with you to explain to you how we can be of help, of service to your organization, to your team, you can type in your phone number and email, say, please give me a call. And then we talk about, we have, we have developed a couple of products and services which we can help you with during this time, during this crisis. So you can type in your phone number and, and email and then we'll reach out to you, okay? Uh, so these are some of the services. Please type in the commitments. The commitments and if you need us to follow up with you, to talk to your organization on how we can help you, please let us know. Uh, these are some of the, we can offer counseling sessions. We have some counselors on the team. We can offer mentoring and coaching uh, to your team during this period and beyond. Psychosocial support. That's the other thing that most members are not paying attention to. Mental health. Even though it did not show up uh, big time, because again, we had just gotten into the lockdown, I can guarantee you this is now as we move along, it's going to become a bigger need. People are stressed, they are worried, they are fearful, some are losing their jobs. So the issue of mental health is a biggie in our view. Uh, so people need psychosocial support. Business clinics, um, if you're in business, I know so Joseph, if that's so uh, interest you, that's something we can do. Also coming up, uh, we have a couple of uh, events coming up, uh, usually 2.30 to, to to four o'clock. These are some of the events. We have intentional parenting, uh, raising emotionally healthy, mature and disciplined children. Uh, that will be on 14th May. So that's what, that's tomorrow. Um, then we have personal finance management, which is happening on Friday, I believe. Yeah, that's 15th. Then we have stress and anxiety management in challenging times on 19th. We have impactful communication during a crisis for leaders. Uh, that will be very useful for you, building highly self-driven and bonded remote teams on 26 May. And then we have good governance and performance management for remote teams, because we've noticed that's a big need uh, right now. So those are some of the topics coming up. And of course, we'll be reaching out to you. Those are our contacts. Uh, you can take a screenshot or something. I'll be putting the screenshot later. And uh, so the way it happens for this, all these webinars that you're seeing, and oh, the other thing which I believe is extremely critical, which we've been discussing as Success Africa, is we definitely, you definitely absolutely would highly recommend 
that you could uh, you consider engaging us as a third party to survey your team to know what are their fears what are their concerns what are their dreams what are the issues we can also help your team uh, if there are exits for example because we know some organizations are right sizing and as such they are letting some staff go but there are lots of more emotional and mental issues going on so how do we help those people uh, the in terms of fees, we typically charge uh, $30 per person. And if you're a big organization, uh, the numbers are there. We can charge up to $15 per person. You can pay through mobile money and the like. Um, these are the those are the webinars coming up. Of course, we'll be reaching out. To, those are the phone numbers which you can reach us out on. And uh, let me see. There are some comments coming through in terms of uh, what people are going to do different. Uh, Pass is saying virtual hangouts. Um, someone on the Nokia says, come up with guide documents, support managers on how to effectively manage their remote work, working teams. Uh, says robust performance systems, regular checkups, and uh, that are not work related. Yeah, that's very important at Success Africa. We start with how are you and your family. We start with that. Uh, clear daily variables for the team. I hope my line managers will appreciate the importance because they are, they are key in the process. That's what Aida says. Uh, let me see who else. Uh, yeah, so those are some of the commitments coming up. Now, the, I would encourage you to reach out to the team at, in terms of your interested in us helping you and supporting you. And uh, Julia, is there anything else I've forgotten that you'd want us to mention? Julia? Uh, yes, it would be the, the link to the research, ah. uh, which I'm just going to paste in the chat. Fantastic. Oh, thank God you remembered that. Yeah, so the research, you the details, you got a brief from Dr. Everest, but if you want to get the full research report, it's a 66 page report, uh, which delves into detail and other things you've not mentioned. You go to success africa.com forward slash research. That is success africa.com forward slash research. So then there you'll be able to access the link, download it, share it. Uh, thanks, Julia. I can see Julia has um, shared it in the chat box. Grab it, go read the report, share it with your team. So once again, I would like to thank the Success Africa team. I, I know, you know, we have been having different projects, different webinars and more to come. Different people have been leading different uh, uh, engagements. This one was led by Pamela and Pascal. Uh, Pamela Elobu and Pascal Nyanduru to, to put this together and of course supported by the rest of the team like uh, Julia mentioned. Then of course Dr. Everest uh, to the Ahikayo, who was my co-presenter today and Diana who received so many questions and as such will be bringing her on board <laughs> in the near future and will alert you. Diana who is the uh, HR HR um, that this is an HR uh, business partner, Sub-Saharan uh, Africa, British Council. She's been very, uh, you know, very resourceful in her presentation. And to you for having saved your time, we don't take it for granted. So thank you so much. Uh, may the good Lord bless you. If there's any way we can be of help, please reach out to us. If you need individualized coaching as an individual, um, you can go to ethanmussolini.com forward slash coaching. That is ethanmussolini.com forward slash coaching. Uh, you can reach out to our, on our social media pages, uh, Success Africa. You can go to facebook.com forward slash Success Africa Uganda. Uh, for Ethan, you can go to just facebook.com forward slash Ethan Mussolini. You can see many thank yous coming through from Rita, from Juliet. Uh, the Galaxy S9 person. I suppose that could be Susan. I need to remember the name. So thank you so much. And uh, may the good Lord bless you. We will uh, reach out. We'll be rich. We'll be communicating. Everybody says, be blessed too. Thank you, Dr. Everest. So thank you so much. And uh, for Harry, God bless. Um, and we will connect.
because that Success Africa, we believe in you. And the consulate says thank you, Success Africa, for this. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Esther Ruth uh, Owl says thank you. Hilda says thank you. You're welcome. Um, Judith says, uh, Judith Najuko says, we appreciate your efforts. You're welcome, my dear. And um, yeah, so that's, uh, we can see lots of thank yous coming through, even from Mildred. Thank you so much, success team. Success, um, you're welcome. So uh, 